Hello, hello, hello. My name is Nick Smith, founder and creator of Part Time Pilot and the host of the Audio Ground School podcast. I say host, I'm not really hosting much. I just read off the lessons in our online ground school so that you can get it for free in a podcast so you can listen. Whatever it is you're doing, you can multitask and learn your ground school content at the same time. Today's episode, episode number 31, is about a review of everything we just covered in the last like three or four episodes. So in the last three or four episodes, we've been talking all about the airspaces and different airspaces and airspace requirements. And that includes things like the minimum, the VFR minimum weather requirements, equipment requirements, and minimum requirements for pilot certificates and things like that to operate in these airspaces. So today in episode number 31, we are going to review all that and then talk about some mnemonic devices that you can use to help you to help you sort of remember all the stuff because this is one of the subjects is most asked about on the FAA written exam and it's one of the subjects that's kind of hard to remember all the little details it's that rote memorization so rote memorization is simple memorization things it's not really understanding a concept it's just sort of memorizing facts and figures so that's what rote memorization kind of learning is and this is that thing so it's just going to take repetition and some mnemonic devices to help you remember these things so that's what we're going to do in this episode and then we're going to go through a bunch of different questions and I'll give you a few seconds to think about it and if you're listening along you know answer in your head or out loud if you're in front of other people maybe not out loud so you don't look crazy but we're going to go over a bunch of FA written type questions and we're going to talk about those mnemonic devices. I even have a video so you can get the visual of these mnemonic devices that really really help you remember because they give a visual for all these things. I'm going to put that in the show notes so you can see that visual even if you're not in the online ground school we also have the figures the video in the online ground school so if you are following along please go and check that out before we get started one cool thing that i i just want to mention and say thank you guys for everyone who's listening and downloading these podcast episodes is that we reached on average about over 500 downloads every single day day so 500 people a day are downloading this podcast i think they understand how valuable it is and that it's free and then how great it is to use the media that is audio it's kind of like reading but where you have to picture things you you have to make your mind work and picture things in your mind and come up with a a picture yourself and that kind of helps with the learning process but unlike reading you don't have to stop other things that you're doing right it doesn't take your eyes and it doesn't take your full undivided attention so that is really cool and i think you guys are understanding that and it shows so really cool over 500 a day we had i think yesterday let me look here we had over 600 i think it was it was 642 downloads yesterday at the time i'm recording this so that's very very cool so thank you guys all right with that without further ado let's get started and like i said we are in going through the lessons in the online ground school Uh, in the online ground school it's a series of courses and it's labeled step by steps and so step two is all the lessons and videos and mnemonic devices and images and quizzes and all that stuff so that's the bulk of the stuff you learn and we're in section six of step two so step two is all the lessons and we're in section six on national airspace systems so following along go check that out and we've covered you know lessons one through nine of of that already so we're on lesson 10 which is on airspace review and that's all we're going to cover today we're going to kind of wrap up the airspaces today and review and like i said talk about some ways to remember that so let's get to it all right so i'm going to read from this lesson again it's gonna there's some visual aids in here that are really 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 handy in helping you remember these things so and why these visual aids are helpful is because you can picture something visual in your mind so when you picture these visual shapes that we're going to talk about and you can redraw them out on your scratch paper during the FA written when you can picture like a, a picture in your mind it can help bring out those memories and get down on paper what it was that all these things you had to memorize are so please if you're following along go look at these i'll do my best to describe these this lesson is to review your knowledge on all the airspaces 
Practice makes perfect. Start the quiz below, so we're gonna get to the quiz when you are ready. To help with your memory of all the minimums for each airspace, we're gonna use some common memory aids that I show here in the lesson. The first is a table that can help you learn if you can draw it by memory. So you can kind of make a table. It's got two columns in some places, and then in some places it's got four columns where it's a little more complex, like in class G airspace, if you remember that. The tables, but those columns are airspace and then the mnemonic for the weather minimums. So we'll get to it. And so you just think of a, a, a table with two columns. You got airspace, so either class A, B, C, or D. And then you have a mnemonic, which is the, the visibility and cloud clearances. Class E and G airspaces are further broken down, like I said, by altitudes and day slash night. So remember those class A, B, C, and D, it doesn't matter whether it's day or night or what the altitude is. If you're in those airspaces, these are the weather minimums. But for class E, it depends on the altitude. And then class G, it depends not only on the altitude, but whether it's day or night. So those airspace rows are broken down into further columns for the time of day and the altitude. These mnemonics start with the visibility. So the mnemonics for the weather minimum start with the visibility first and then list an abbreviated cloud clearance. So for example, we might have three comma COC. The three is the visibility in statute miles and COC is short for clear of clouds. Another example, we might have three 152. Again, the three is statute miles visibility. It will always be statute miles. And then the 152 is short for 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal distance from clouds, 152. 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, 2,000 feet horizontal. Then we have 5111, five statute mile of visibility, and then the 111 stands for 1,000 feet above, 1,000 feet below, and one statute mile horizontal distance from clouds. So those are some I want you to remember, and we'll talk about these in the table. So the first row of the table has two columns, and it's class A on the first column for the airspace, and then the mnemonic is no VFR. So class A, you're not allowed to fly VFR, so there's no VFR flight minimums. That one's pretty easy. Next row is class Bravo airspace, and the mnemonic for that is three COC. So three statute miles clear of cloud. If you happen to have a piece of paper while you're listening to this, might be handy to write out this table if you're not in the online ground school, but I will provide a link to a video in the show notes where you can see these in a video. All right, so the next one is class Charlie, and that mnemonic is 3152. Three statue miles and then 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, 2,000 feet horizontal. Class D is the same, 3152. Three statue miles, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, 2,000 feet horizontal. Class E or class Echo, when you are less than 10,000 feet, it remains the same, 3152. When you are above 10,000 feet, it turns into 5111. Five statute miles, 1,000 feet above, 1,000 feet below, and one statute mile horizontal distance from cloud. Now class golf or class G airspace. For the altitudes of 1,200 feet or less AGL, in the day or night, but half nautical miles from an airport, it's going to be one statute mile. It's going to be one COC. So one statute mile clear of clouds. So that's day or night, but a half nautical mile to the airport, 1,200 feet AGL or less, that's one COC. Also 1,200 feet AGL or less, at night, it turns to 3,152. Three statute miles, visibility, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, 2,000 feet horizontal. Now, when we're above 1,200 feet AGL, but less than 10,000 feet MSL, for daytime, it's 1,152. So one statue mile of visibility, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal distance from clouds. Then, again, in the altitude range of 1,200 feet AGL to 10,000 feet MSL, at night, that goes up to 3,152. So the visibility requirement goes up. You need three statute miles of visibility at night between 1,200 feet AGL and 10,000 feet MSL. And then finally, class D, at or above 10,000 feet MSL, it turns to 5,111. Five statute miles, 1,000 feet above, 1,000 feet below, and one statute mile horizontal. That is for at or above 10,000 feet in class G. All right, that's the first memory aid. So it's a table format. So if you can remember to make this table where you have these columns and you rem if you can remember the columns, right? It's easy to remember the airspaces, class A, B, C, D, E, G, right? And then if you can remember the other columns such as, all right, well, class E, it's less than 10,000, above 10,000. For class G, it's more complicated, but you can remember the altitude ranges of 12,000 feet AGL or less than 12,000 feet AGL to 10,000 feet MSL 
and then above 10,000 feet MSL. And then you just remember day and night for each of those, except for above 10,000 feet MSL. And then you just got to remember match up. Once you can draw that, then you say, okay, now what are the mnemonics? And it kind of helps you visually see it. But the second memory tool actually helps a little bit better because it really ingrains a picture in my mind. This is the tool that I use to finally remember all these when I was studying for my private pilot. And this is a pyramid. It's like an airspace pyramid. You may have seen this, you may not, but you simply draw a big triangle and then make four smaller triangles within it and a base of the triangle as well. Then you use the top triangle for class E and G, the bottom left triangle for class G at night, the middle triangle for class C, D, and E, the bottom right triangle for class G during the day, then the base of the triangle is reserved for class B. Finally, you add some dashed lines for the altitudes of 10,000 feet MSL and 1,200 feet AGL. Draw the 1,200 feet AGL line just above the bottom of the class G night and class G day triangle. Now you have a triangle that is broken down by the altitudes from low to high with the exce exception of class Bravo, which is agnostic to altitude in terms of visibility and cloud clearing. You can also split the class G night triangle that is below 1,200 feet AGL into two where one side is a special case for class G night flying when you're within half mile of an airport. So this one, you really got to kind of see what it looks like. So again, check out that video in the show notes or follow along in the lesson. But we basically have a pyramid and you have like a small base of the pyramid, okay, that you build the rest of your pyramid on top of. And then the, the pyramid on top of that base is divided into four triangles. There's one triangle in the middle and then one, two more on the bottom on either side and then one on top. <laughs> That's the best way I can audibly describe what's happening there. Uh, anyways, again, check that out. So in the top pyramid, again, it's E and G. So what you do is you write E and G and then you write five comma 111. And then in the bottom left pyramid, class G night, you write three 152. And then in the middle pyramid for C, D, and E, you write three comma 152. And then in the bottom right pyramid, you write G day, one comma 152. And then you have the line for 10,000 feet MSL that divides the top triangle with the three triangles on the bottom. And then you have a line for 1,200 feet AGL, which intersects through the three bottom triangles and then on that below that line you would then have half nautical mile to the airport is one clear of clouds not half nautical mile to the airport but at night is 3152 and then during the day it's one clear of clouds for class g and then obviously in the base that's only class bravo and that's three clear of clouds this sounds super complex in in audible version but trust me if you practice drawing this this is this is exactly what i did is i just tried to draw this triangle by memory 10 times until i finally got it all right so now's the time to do some quiz questions to help again solidify this stuff but before we get to that i just realized that i didn't tell anybody about this but now on all our quiz questions lesson quizzes and all our practice tests we now have those like those codes those question codes that you see like on fa written reports after a student takes their fa written exam all the questions that they miss the areas the subject areas they miss they'll have codes on them and those codes are what the private pilot or sorry the designated pilot examiner during their check ride will will look at those codes and know the subject areas to quiz them more on during their oral so since you have lifetime access to our online ground school, you can get that. And this is just one of the ways these can help. You can get that those codes on your written test report scorecard, and then you can go and look for those type of questions in the online ground school in our quizzes and our practice tests and stuff like that. So it's a good way to cross reference. These are also, you can look at a code and then you can go to the private pilot ACS. You can search for that code and you can see the subject and what the ACS wants for that code. So really cool, a CFI, great CFI who helps us out from time to time. Sarah, she did all that. So thank you, Sarah, shout out to you. But yeah, so those are in there now. 
Um, so I'm looking at those in the quiz questions we're about to do. But before we get to the quiz questions, I have a new thing that I want to share with you guys. And it's kind of a cool thing that I got. So I really like coffee. Uh, I like flying, obviously. And I got contacted by this really, really awesome company. I did some more research. I talked to the guy. They basically, they're called Twin Engine Coffee Company. They are based in Nicaragua. He's an American guy, but he's based in Nicaragua. So it's really cool because he has like this mission to like help the poverty down there instead of just taking out all the resources and the coffee beans and then selling them elsewhere he actually like makes jobs and does all the work and then ships and packages and ships it from nicaragua and it's called twin engine coffee he's an aviation enthusiast and he sent me some samples and it's really really good so i want to play something from them real quick before we get to the quiz questions Hi, this is Bree from Part-Time Pilot. There is no better way to wake up in the morning of a flight than with clear skies and a cup of hot, delicious coffee. And there is no better coffee than coffee straight from Nicaragua. And there is no better coffee for pilots than twin engine coffee. That's why I bought a custom pod for my Keurig and Nespresso machines and a coffee grinder just so that I could grind my own fresh Nicaraguan coffee beans from Twin Engine Coffee. It's so much better than those stupid K-cups or K-pods or whatever you call them. But right now you're probably like, why are you telling us about coffee? Well, it's because not only is it aviation-themed coffee straight from Nicaragua, but it's also coming from a great cause. Rather than taking all of the coffee beans out of Nicaragua to package and sell elsewhere, Twin Engine Coffee is headquartered in Nicaragua where they have created jobs for local community and have a mission to help reduce local poverty. So if you're a pilot and you like coffee, head over to twinenginecoffee.com ptp or with the link in the show notes to order fresh whole bean Nicaraguan coffee straight to your home today. Okay, so thanks for listening to that. I really, really enjoy their coffee, and I like that they're aviation-themed. And they have a really cool mission down there in Nicaragua. So if you want some fresh Nicaraguan coffee and you like coffee, go and check them out. I will put a link in the show notes with a link to their stuff. So go check that out. All right, so let's get to the quiz, the review quiz, and test your knowledge on airspace requirements. All right, so the first one, student pilots are allowed to fly solo under VFR with a solo endorsement from an instructor, but what airspace requires an additional endorsement to fly solo in? Is it class A, class B, or class C airspace? Student pilots are allowed to fly solo under VFR with a solo endorsement from an instructor, but what airspace requires an additional endorsement to fly solo in? A, B, or C airspace? Give you a few seconds. All right, the answer, of course, is Class Bravo airspace. Class Bravo is the only airspace that requires a specific and additional endorsement to fly solo in. Class A airspace does not allow VFR flight. Class C airspace, as long as you have a solo endorsement from your instructor, you do not need a specialized airspace endorsement for Class C. All right, so let's go to the next one. There's a couple here with like FAA charts and maps. So if you're in the online ground school, I highly recommend you do this whole quiz, but we obviously can't do the visual ones here on the podcast. So skip those. All right. If a class E airspace starts at 700 feet AGL, what airspace is below it? Class A, class D, class G. If a class E airspace starts at 700 feet AGL, what airspace is below it? A, A. D or G. And again, I'll give you a few seconds. All right, the answer is class G, class golf. When class E airspace does not extend to the surface, it means that class G lies below it. Class G is uncontrolled airspace. All right, next one. At or below 1200 feet AGL during the day, the minimum visibility and cloud clearance for flight in class G airspace is what? This is below 1200 feet AGL during the day for class G. Visibility at least one statute mile and clear of clouds. 
visibility at least three statute miles and 500 feet above, 1,000 feet below, 2,000 feet horizontal from clouds, or visibility at least three statute miles and clear of clouds. So you have one clear of clouds, three 500 feet above, 1,000 feet below, 2,000 feet horizontal, or three and clear of clouds. All right, so for class G below 1200 feet AGL during the day, the visibility and cloud clearance requirements are one statue mile and clear of clouds. So that was the first option, option A. Okay, the next one, at or below 1200 feet AGL during the night and when not within a half mile of an airport, the minimum visibility and cloud clearance for flight in class G airspace is what? We're 1200 feet or below 1200 feet AGL, we're at night and we're not close to an airport and we're in class G, what are the visibility and cloud clearances? Is it one statute mile and clear of clouds, three statute miles and 152, which is three statute miles, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal, or is it three statute miles and clear of clouds? One clear of clouds, three 152, or three clear of clouds? Below 1,200 feet AGL at night, not within half mile of an airport and in class G the answer is visibility of at least three statue miles a thousand feet above 500 feet below and 2,000 feet horizontal distance from clouds so that's 3 152 remember at night it goes to the same as what we have for class echo and class D and class C when we're below 10,000 feet for class echo at least and that is 3 152 all right good job if you got that one class D is some of the more difficult ones to remember so let's do another one here. Below 10,000 feet MSL, what is the minimum visibility and cloud clearance for VFR operation in class E echo airspace? Is it three statue miles and 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, 2,000 feet horizontal? Or is it five statute miles, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal? Or is it three statute miles, 1,000 feet above, 1,000 feet below, and one statute mile horizontal distance from clouds? This is Class E airspace below 10,000 feet MSL. Is it 3152, 5152, or 3111? All right, so if you remembered those mnemonics that we had, you know, we had clear of clouds ones, we had one comma clear of clouds, we had 3152, and then we had 5111. So some of these don't even, aren't, any of those like we had a 5152 that didn't exist in our mnemonic devices right so we can cross off that option and then we had 3111 that also did not exist it was 5111 so we can cross that one off as well so that leaves us with the first option which is 3152 and that makes sense Class E below 10,000 feet, it's the same thing as Class C and Class D airspace. That's three statue miles and 152 or 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal distance from clouds. All right, good job if you got that one. All right, next one. Which airspace is represented by a shaded, transparent magenta lines and sometimes dashed magenta lines on aeronautical charts? Is it Class Bravo, Class Charlie, or Class Echo airspace? So magenta lines, it's dash magenta or shaded transparent magenta lines. Bravo, Charlie, or Echo airspace. The answer, of course, is class Echo, right? Class Echo is represented by shaded magenta as well as dash magenta lines when it denotes that the class E extends to the surface. So the, the shaded magenta, you have the dark side, which denotes when class echo starts at 1200 feet and then you have the light side where it class echo starts at 700 feet and then inside the dashed magenta lines that's when it starts at the surface all right next one what is the minimum visibility and cloud clearance required for vfr flight within class d delta airspace is it one statute mile and clear of clouds so one coc or visibility of three statute miles and 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal, so three, 152. Or is it five statute miles, 1,000 feet above, 1,000 feet below, and one statute mile horizontal distance from clouds, or five, 111. So this is class D airspace VFR weather minimums. One clear of clouds, three, 152, or five, 111. So this one's a little bit more difficult because all of those exists all those mnemonic devices exist the 5111 the 3152 and the one clear of clouds
All right, so the answer is three statue miles of visibility, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal. That's the 3152 for class C, D, and E airspace below 10,000 feet is 3152. So let's continue on here. What type of line dictates the boundaries of class D airspace on aeronautical charts? Is it solid blue lines, dash blue lines, or solid magenta lines? Class D airspace, the lines on aeronautical charts. Solid blue, dashed blue, or solid magenta? All right, well, obviously, class D is represented by dashed blue lines. When you see the dashed blue circles, those are class D airspace. Class B is the solid blue lines, while class C is the solid magenta lines. All right, good job. Let's continue on here. Let's see here. All right, what is the minimum visibility and cloud clearance required to fly VFR in class Bravo airspace? Is it one statute mile clear of clouds? So that's one COC. Is it three statute miles and clear of clouds or three COC? Or is it three statute miles, 500 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and 2,000 feet horizontal distance from clouds? So I, if you notice, there's a little tweak in this question to kind of make you think. Usually, so in the last one, I said three statute miles and 500 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and 2,000 feet horizontal. That would be 3512 if we just read it how it is. But the question listed 500 feet below first. So it, it listed the below requirement first rather than above requirement how we're used to. We're used to hearing what it is above, what it is below, and then what it is horizontal. So this actually is 3152 because if we switch the above and below so that the 1,000 feet above is first, it goes 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, 2,000 feet horizontal distance from clouds. So that's another thing you want to look out for when you're using these mnemonic devices. The 3152, that 152 is in order of above, below, horizontal, above, below, horizontal. So you got to remember that just in case a question kind of mixes those up on you. And so you're not looking at all right, what it is wrongly, right? So, okay, so we have class Bravo airspace, visibility and cloud clearance requirements. We have one clear of clouds, three clear of clouds, and three 152. The answer is B, three statue miles and clear of clouds. The weather minimum requirements for VFR flight in class Bravo are three statue miles and clear of clouds. All right. Good job, everybody. We got some more questions here, a bunch more questions with like visual aeronautical charts on there, which are very good to know. Those are going to be FA written questions. So please follow along in the ground school for those. All right, let's see here. One more cloud clearance one. The minimum distance from clouds required for VFR operations on an airway below 10,000 feet MSL is remain clear of clouds. 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal, so that's 152, or 500 feet above, 1,000 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal, so that would be like 512. So clear clouds, 152, or 512, and this is the minimum distance from clouds required for VFR operations on an airway below 10,000 feet MSL. So if you remember, we talked about airways when we talked about our lesson on class E, class echo airspace. Airways, VFR airways, act as class echo airspace on, I believe, four nautical miles to either side of the airway as charted on the aeronautical chart. So when you're in that airway, you follow the class weather minimum rules. So when you're below 10,000 feet MSL, you have three 152. So 152 would be option B, which is 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal. Again, airways operate under class E airspace rules for VFR weather minimums, and under class 10,000, class E is three statute miles and 152. All right, so that was a good one. That's one you'll see, you might see on the FAA written exam. Okay, here's another one that you might see. Outside controlled airspace, the minimum flight visibility requirement for VFR flight above 1,200 feet AGL and below 10,000 feet MSL during daylight hours is one mile, three miles, or five miles. All right, so this one, they kind of ask you it a little bit differently. They don't even tell you in airspace. They just say outside controlled airspace. So what does that mean? That makes no sense. And then it says, all right, during VFR flight above 1,200 feet AGL and below 10,000 feet MSL during daylight hours. Well, one clue here would be either the word outside controlled airspace, aka uncontrolled airspace. So that should tell you that it's class G. But another way it could hint to you this class G is that they give you information, they give you altitude information and whether it's day or night. 
the time of day information. So that's a good hint that they're looking for Class G airspace. Don't assume 100% that it is, but that's a good hint. But the real story here is that it says outside controlled airspace, which means it's uncontrolled and which means it's Class G. All right, so we're talking about Class G, and we're talking about above 1,200 feet but below 10,000 feet during the day, and we want the minimum flight visibility. Remember our mnemonic device for between 1,200 feet AGL and 10,000 feet during the day? Our visibility is one statute mile. So that's option A, one mile. And then the cloud clearance requirements in that situation, which the question did not ask for, but if it did, it would be 152. All right. Let's see if we have any others here. Most of these are with diagrams and stuff. Okay, here's one. We'll get to some equipment questions. Don't want to forget about the required equipment. So unless otherwise authorized, two-way radio communications with air traffic control are required for landings or takeoffs at all towered airports, A, regardless of weather conditions, B, only when weather conditions are less than VFR, or C, within Class D airspace, only when weather conditions are less than VFR. All right, so again, unless otherwise authorized, two-way radio communications with air traffic control are required for landings or takeoffs at all towered airports. So remember, towered airports means that the airspace around the airport is going to be controlled when that tower, especially when that tower is in operational. And when that tower is in operational, it's at least going to be a class D airspace, right? When it's, if it, if it has a tower and it's not operational during the times it's not operational, that class D turns into a class E airspace, which is still controlled, but you're not required to have two-way radio communications when that tower is not in operation. Unless of course you are approaching an airspace that has a tower. So with that said, the choices again are regardless of weather conditions, only when weather conditions are less than VFR, or within class D airspace, only when weather conditions are less than VFR. We know that what I just said has nothing to do with the weather condition. So we can cross off options B and C because, and then option A says regardless of weather conditions. So we know it's if the tower's operating, we got to talk to them. And that's in class B, C, and then D is the only one that will likely have times when it's not operational. So in those situations, when there's a tower operating in airspace, we got to have two-ray radio comms. And so that's what that says. And so it has nothing to do with weather. And that's one you might see again on the FA written. All right, let's see here if there's any more. I think that's going to do it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this airspace review. Wasn't sure exactly how it was going to go or how helpful it would be, but I know that with this stuff, repetition is key. And like I said, the thing that helped me the most was the pyramid mnemonic device so please go check out the video in the show notes for that mnemonic device and then you simply just take a piece of paper and try and draw it by memory it's it's easy to get started right you just practice first the shape the shape and then the inner shapes it's a big triangle and then the the four inner pyramids or inner triangles and the base and then okay once you get that down then draw the altitudes the altitude lines of 1200 feet agl and 10,000 feet agl where they're supposed to be once you get that down that's that's pretty easy that you should be able to do just a couple tries then fill in the triangles with the airspaces and their mnemonic devices for weather vfr weather minimums all right so go check that out in the show notes and hopefully it helps also it, it, we have those pictures and the videos in there in the online ground school so thank you guys for listening i will talk to you guys next week when we are going to finish up the national airspace system section on transponder requirements it's not quite 100 percent associated with airspaces but it is in a way because and you'll see when we get to those requirements some airspaces require the transponder some don't and then some airspaces even if you're close to those airspaces they they require a transponder so it is and it isn't so i i threw it on the end of this section because i think that was a good place to put it so we'll talk about that next time and then if we finish that we'll get into section seven on fundamentals of aerodynamics so that'll be a fun one that we will talk about it's got 11 lessons another big key section and we are just powering through this. I'm going to have to start thinking of my own content once we get through all these lessons. Um, but no, I, I'm sure I'll have plenty of content for you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed it and hope you have a good week of flying, studying, all that stuff. And I'll talk to you guys next time.